Mm. These are so good. I'm down to my last jar of pickles. I've given away or eaten all the ones up to this point, so it's time to make some more. The recipe is incredibly easy. Four ingredients and about five days. And you'll have delicious pickles too. Mm. I'm Gardener Scott. I'm a master gardener and a master food preserver. And today I'm going to show you how to make old fashioned fermented pickles. The ingredients should be fresh. So I get all of the ingredients from my garden. These are all things that you can easily grow. I start with the pickling cucumbers. This is a Boston pickling cucumber. And I just went out in the morning and harvested as many as I could find off the plants. After harvesting the pickling cucumbers, now I'm going to get some fresh dill. There's lots of flavor in the flowers. And I'll also cut off, well, let's do some of these nice dill leaves too. After bringing the cucumbers and the dill inside, I grabbed a bulb of Romanian red garlic. I grew this too, so everything came from my garden. Now, if you're not growing these, you can easily find garlic, dill, and cucumbers at your store. But I encourage you to plan, maybe for next year, to grow everything because it's incredibly easy. The next ingredient is salt. And I use about one and a half tablespoons, which is the equivalent of 22 grams. The salt is used to make a brine. And we want the salinity of the brine to be between 2% and 5%. So that works out to about one to three tablespoons per quart of water. And I'm going right in the middle of that. One and a half tablespoons for a quart of water, which is the equivalent of 22 grams of salt, and I'm using sea salt. And I add that to about 920 grams of water, and I'm using filtered water. I put the water and the salt in a pan on my stove and heat it up, stirring to make sure that the salt is completely dissolved. And after it's warm and the salt is completely dissolved, I set it aside to cool. And while it's cooling, I get the rest of the ingredients together. And remember, it's just cucumbers, dill, garlic, and the brine. I start by taking the skin off of the garlic. And then it's time to cut the cucumbers. Now, I've got some bigger pickling cucumbers and smaller pickling cucumbers. I like to cut them into slices. So I pick different sizes. So when I put the slices into the jar, I can stuff a lot in. You could just as easily pick a single size and cut them into spears and use the cucumber spears in a jar. I like the slices and that's the way I'm going to go. The most important thing, whether you do slices or spears, is to make sure you cut off the flower end of the cucumber. The flower end actually has some enzymes that can soften the cucumbers. So get rid of that, eat it, throw it in the compost pile, feed it to your worms, but the rest of the cucumber can be used, except for the part with the flower on it. And now I'll just cut all of these cucumbers into slices that are about a quarter inch thick. As you cut your cucumbers, I recommend that you go ahead and taste what you're cutting. Go ahead and take a little bit of the cucumber just to make sure it's sweet, that it tastes good. Because if you put a sour cucumber into a jar for fermentation, 
it's not going to taste as good as a delicious sweet cucumber that you put in for fermentation. With the cucumbers all cut, I get some glass weights and some fermentation lids and I'll show you how I use all these. Here's what happens for fermentation. We have our brine which has a lot of salt in it and when we use a brine with a vegetable like the cucumbers or the garlic, that brine is going to kill bad bacteria because this is all covered with bacteria of all different types. Well, the bad bacteria is killed and the good bacteria that can live in a salty environment begins to grow. And that's the lactis bacillus bacteria. And as it grows and begins to feed on the carbohydrates that are in all these vegetables, it releases some byproducts. One of the byproducts is carbon dioxide, which is why we need a lid that can release that gas. So this is a fermentation lid where the gas will go up through the top and escape. And this is a fermentation lid. It has a very small hole at the end of this dimple. The other byproduct of this bacteria is lactic acid. And that's what ferments our food. It's that lactic acid that drives the pH down to the point that no other bacteria can grow. And that's why this is a great way of preservation because that one type of bacteria, the lactobacillus, is good enough to kill the bad bacteria on the front side and the back side. And in the process, while it's eating away the sugars within these vegetables, it's creating a pretty delicious food. I washed some pint jars well with hot water and soap and let them dry. And now it's time to put everything together. So I just take some of these larger slices and put them in the jar. And when I get about halfway filled, I'll take a good sprig of the dill and I'll place it into the jar as well. And then I'll take some garlic and I'll slide it down around the edges. Now this Romanian red is a pretty strong garlic and what I found is the fermentation process really extenuates that garlic flavor. So when I make pickles using vinegar, I'll put two or three cloves in each jar because I really like the flavor and the taste of the garlic. But when I do the fermentation, I cut that back to only one clove or maybe two small cloves just because it gets a really intense garlic flavor. Now I'm including this as an ingredient for this fermentation recipe, but you could just as easily leave the garlic out if you don't like it. You could put onions in, you could put mustard seed, you could put black peppercorns, you can add whatever you want. I like it simple, I like garlic, and this is the way I do it. And so as I add more of these larger slices, I have room around the edges to put in some of these smaller cucumber pieces that will fill some of the air space. And I do want to try to fill up as much of the air space as I can using all these different cucumbers. And as I get close to the top, I'll mix and match a little bit, some of the small, some of the medium, just to try to get as much of the space filled as possible. And then when I've got about as many cucumbers as I think will fit into this jar, and as I'm looking, I think I can put a few more right here. There's still a lot of air here. That should be good. Now I'll take my brine and just pour it in. I want to cover these completely. And that's where these glass weights come in. I'll put the glass weight and actually push it down so that I'm sure that the cucumbers are completely submerged. And this is very important. The lactobacillus bacteria needs to live in an environment with no air, no oxygen. So we have to keep the oxygen away from these cucumbers while they're fermenting. 
That's why I'm using this weight so that the cucumber slices are completely submerged within the brine. You can use anything else to weight it down. You might want to use a grape leaf. You could use rocks. You can use anything that you want, but make sure that the cucumbers are completely submerged in the brine. So you can see again, when I push down on this weight, the liquid brine is coming up. Now, when I put one of these fermentation lids on the jar, all of the cucumbers are submerged and the fermentation has begun. So I'll just continue this process using a clean jar, cucumbers, garlic, dill, some brine, a weight, and one of these fermentation lids. And I'll put a link to all of this equipment down below. Now, I like using these fermentation lids, but you don't have to. You can just cover the top with a towel, or you can loosely put a lid on, as long as there's room for that carbon dioxide to escape. But I like to have the weight held down by the lid, and I like to keep out insects and who knows what other type of contamination. So that's why I use these lids. The choice is entirely yours. And so I just set the jars off to the side in a place where they can be undisturbed. They're out of direct sunlight and they're going to sit in this spot for the next five days. After two or three days, we'll be able to start seeing some changes in the cucumbers and the brine. And I'll show you that right away. You can expect at the end of the first 24 hours that the brine will still be clear, but you might notice that the cucumbers are turning a bright green. On day two, you'll notice the brine begins to turn a little cloudy. This shows that the bacteria is getting to work and multiplying. The bright green has begun to dull and the cucumber interior is not as bright white as it was. On day three, you'll notice that the colors are definitely fading and you might even see some bubbles start to rise. Depending on what type of lid you're using, you might actually see a little bit of a bulge in the top. It should release naturally, but if you just squeeze it, it lets the air out. And so you can wiggle the jars a little bit just to release some of the carbon dioxide gas. You'll also notice that the weights are starting to move a little farther down in the jar as all that air begins to escape. On the fourth day, you might notice that the brine is beginning to get clear again as sediment sinks to the bottom. The pickles are starting to look like pickles. They'll start to be green throughout. And you'll also probably notice the aroma of the fermentation. Now that the lactic acid is formed, and the cucumbers are fermenting, the gases that are released will add a little special aroma to the air. Now I said at the beginning of the video that this was a five day fermentation and that was my plan. But yesterday, the fifth day got away from me. I wasn't able to film. So now I'm continuing on the sixth day to see how the pickles turned out. And the reason this is important is because Temperature makes a difference. The air temperature of where you're fermenting your pickles. And during the summer, the air temperature tends to be warmer, which means the fermentation happens faster. During cool air temperature days, like in the winter or the spring, the fermentation can be drawn out a little longer. Well, my indoor air temperature is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit during the heat of the day, maybe a little bit more. That justifies a five day fermentation. If it goes longer than that, there's the possibility that it might not turn out perfectly. So let's take a look and see what happened. 
I go ahead and take the tops off of the jars. Now it's perfectly normal to see a little bit of scum at the top and all you do is just spoon it off and it's ready to go. If you open up a jar and you notice there's no scum, that it's looking pretty clear, all you do is just remove the weight and the other weight is over at this point. I'll go ahead and grab a pickle and taste it. Mm. Mm. These are also very good. These are a little bit softer than normal. And that may be because I waited the six days and it has been warmer than normal. So probably would have been better for me to go ahead and stop at the five day point. And I'll do that with the rest of the jars. Take off the weight and then check on the pickle. Still has good flavor, a little bit softer. So I should have checked at the five day point and I would have had crunchier pickles. It's completely up to you as to what kind of crunch level you like. I like mixing my dill pickles in to tuna and potato salad, and these will be perfect for that. It still has a crunch, it still has a good flavor. If you smell it, on the sixth day, the aroma is virtually not there. It smells like dill pickles. If the jar has a really bad aroma, if it just smells bad, don't even taste it. It's probably been a faulty fermentation and just toss the pickles. The brine should look clear. The pickles should have a nice uniform green color. It should smell good. And then you can go ahead and taste it. So this worked out pretty well. I like the flavor, I like how it turned out, but it's softer than normal. So because I'm continuing to get cucumbers in the garden, I'll be making more pickles. But as I move forward, the others, I did use a five day fermentation, the ones I pulled from the refrigerator at the beginning of this video, and they had a really good crunch. So the next time I do it, I'll use a five day fermentation. And this is what you should do. Figure out what works best at what time of year. I guess the inside temperatures were a little hotter than I thought they were. And I'll go with a shorter fermentation next time. If you're happy with how they turned out, then just take a cap and put it on the jars and then put them in the refrigerator. They'll store for weeks. Remember the ones I started eating at the beginning of this video were already three weeks old, still tasted great, still had that crunch. I like using these pint jars because they allow me to make very small batches. As I get cucumbers, I can make pickles. You can easily use quart jars or even a big crock if you have a lot of cucumbers. And you don't have to cut them into spears and to slices like I do. You can leave the cucumbers whole and try making pickles that way if you have a bigger container. Again, that's totally up to you and how you decide to ferment. You can also add other flavorings. I'll often put hot pepper flakes in here if I'm growing peppers in the garden. Now I like to use all my own stuff and I don't have any peppers ready for harvest right now, but that's a great option. Another thing you can experiment with is what you add to your pickles. Once you find a recipe like I have that works for you, then stick with it and make as many pickles as you possibly can. And I do have some other videos on how to ferment beets, how to make sauerkraut, how to ferment zucchini. I'll put a link to a couple of those right here. So if you want to continue your fermentation lessons, go ahead and click on one of those videos. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening and fermenting.